Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Hydro Gamer, and welcome back to another video on Civilization VI. And today I want to talk about the world politics system in the game. And I think what's going on here is really, really cool. Now, I, you know, I bought or I bought Gathering Storm, the DLCs, and I've been playing a lot of Gathering Storm over Memorial Day weekend. And I really like the world politics in this game. I like the. I don't necessarily want to say everything about it, but what's in place if there's human players can lead to some amazing things. Feats of political manipulation, you know? It's, it especially, it opens the doors up to beyond just unbalanced trade deals and messaging someone, don't settle here or I'm gonna go after you, right? It really allows you to like, oh, I will pay you to vote this for me. And then they do or don't do it. And then you can attack them, right? Uh, the world politics is really fun. It's really fun to... It's definitely got some weight to it. It's really fun because it's very tense. A lot of weight to your decisions, because you have these diplomatic points, and you don't know whether to spend them or wait. And you know, there's kind of a set amount of things that happens, like, you're always gonna have banning of power plants if you want, you're always gonna have these trade route ones come up, diplomatic victory points come up, foreign aid requests if someone gets ravaged by a disaster you're always gonna have the one come up where if someone gets their city captured oh world council's got to deal with it you know so i think it actually balances out the domination victory because if you have people that also don't want to dominate uh win the domination victory you are gonna get screwed over and that's what happened to me in one of my games where everyone was hunky-dory with each other really nice and i was getting threatened by someone so i first strike them and out of the ten civilizations in them, six people. I was at war with six people. World War One happened, and you know it was kind of scary. And then I realized that there's an ultimate, ultimate problem with these world politics system, which even though it's you know really fun, leads to a lot of manipulation, is that all the AI think the same. Like the AI is programmed to do a couple of things. It's programmed to be anti-war. Okay, which is really weird because some of those civilizations are really good at war. It's programmed to be um, overprotective of the environment, right? Like there's some people, there's a couple civilizations that don't make sense to care for the environment, like Germany with their Hansas, you know? I don't see the a point of Germany caring about the environment in the way that they are in this game. Um, there's some people that do, it makes a lot of sense for them to care about the environment. Um, and there's really no benefit to taking care of the environment either. So, like, you have this weird thing going on where everyone cares about the environment, right? Sometimes you get nuked, a lot of times you don't get nuked because the civs suck at trading resources. Now and now with this update, they're actually pretty good at trading resources, but you're not going to get nuked. They all, all of them care about the environment, and they all are anti-war. So the politics are very, I don't want to say they're bad, but it's the same thing every time now with this world politics system. You're always going to have this weird kind of, okay, if I go to war with someone, there's a chance that five other people are going to go to war with me. If I don't take care of the environment, everyone's going to gain up and ban my power plants, you know? And so there's no tension between the civs. Like, it would be cool if some of them cared about the environment, some were neutral, some didn't. There's, that doesn't feel like a spectrum that you would expect in this game. It's very cut, clear cut, care about the environment or not, you know? Or we're gonna build all the power plants, we're gonna ban every power plant, you know? So it kind of sucks in that way because there's a system here that allows for some intense politics in this game, intense manipulation, and it falls flat on its face with the AI. Humans, humans are humans, you know? There's some people that don't want war, there's some people that do want war, you know, everyone's got their political spectrum that they can shove into the Civ game. So it's pretty cool that, you know, there's a system, there's like a battlefield for the human players to play on other than just, oh, it's everyone's playing war, you know? But when it comes to the AI, no, it, it 
is disappointing. It's a disappointing thing, but the system itself is very good. It's very fun, and I like it. I like what they have. I just wish that it... I wish that they took care of the AI more. You know, I think Civilization VI's greatest weakness is the AI and how bad it is. Like, every Civ game has a bad AI, but this one, it feels like they took steps backward from Civ V. Because in Civ V, you had the spectrums of political, whatever you want to call it. Some people were like, oh, don't go to war. Some people were like, eh, you're fighting them, I don't really care. Oh, you're next to me? Now you're a threat, you know? So, there was that in Civ V, and that just does not exist in Civ VI. So, that's my kind of talk about the world politics in this game. I really like the system. I like the dynamics that it can create. The, the single player experience, though, is... Duh. That's all I have to say about it. Guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. What do you think of the world politics system and civilization? Let me know. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post. Whatever I said to make.